<laughs> Here's today's five-minute medical update. So, on this edition of What's Up, Doc, first, a little shout-out to my buddy Hunter Sutton and my patient with my favorite absolute haircut, Miss Abby Price. Uh, darling, you know we love you. So, these, this one's for you two. I hope you like my little secret scientific lair I've made here. So on June the 5th, 2020, the World Health Organization's science arm published this article that I'm going to show uh, on the screen to address interim guidance for COVID-19 infection transmission, as well as other possible contact precautions with coronavirus, but primarily to address the use of masks and to address the risk of transmission by asymptomatic individuals. On June 9th, I was asked by a professional to address this on What's Up, Doc? There's been a response by the CDC Allergy and Infectious Disease Director, Dr. Anthony Fauci, which I will include in Part 2. First, please understand that I do not normally take as authoritative scientific messages from the World Health Organization because it's primarily the medical science extension of the One World or Leftist United Nations who seems to use the World Health Organization uh, for its broader political agenda and nearly always runs counter to the interest of the United States, its constitution, and our traditional American values. The World Health Organization has also adopted the push to scientific consensus, which is nonsensical because science is not based on the consensus of opinion, and you will see that squeezed into this review of all the available scientific literature worldwide. So please watch through to the end of this video in part two to get the little gem at the end about how even opinion and emotion are included now in scientific articles. So, please note firstly that this is stated, and as I quote, updated guidance and practical advice for decision makers on the use of medical and non-medical masks by the general public using a risk-based approach. So in fact, this article in review of the medical literature sought particularly to advise those who are in the process or in the role of making decisions. Note next that one of the tacit understandings that the World Health Organization presumes is the principle that whether or not masks are used, compliance with hand hygiene and physical distancing and other infection prevention control measures are critical to prevent human transmission of COVID-19 or, as it's better known, SARS-CoV-2, which is the actual virus. As well, this documents the current evidence suggesting that most transmissions of COVID-19 are occurring from symptomatic people to others in close contact when not wearing appropriate personal protective equipment, also known as PPE. Now, now wow, I want you to think about that. Listen to this again. So they, the World Health Organization scientific arm states that the most common way that people get coronavirus infection is from symptomatic people to others in close contact who are not wearing appropriate personal protective equipment. That is a major admission because it's the first one that I've noted that documents the preponderance of evidence of all the studies that they've looked at suggesting that the greatest risk for transmission is not from asymptomatic people in the general public, but through close contact with symptomatic people who are not wearing personal protective equipment. You know, the way that we've been quarantined, you would think that asymptomatic infection is just poised at every gas station and Walmart checkout counter waiting to laser strike totally healthy people if you're more closer than six feet and one inches from another person. This study and, and this review goes on to show that this is not the case. Of course, there's been a backlash against that and I'll address that, but I digress. They go on to cite two studies which carefully investigated secondary transmission from cases to contacts, and one found no secondary transmission among 91 contacts of nine asymptomatic cases, while the other reported only a 6.4% case of transmission that was attributable to asymptomatic patients or presymptomatic patients. Now, please note, the World Health Organization, for some reason, got attached to this, quote, presymptomatic. That's just jargon. They're asymptomatic, and even Dr. Fauci referenced this. Asymptomatic is asymptomatic whether or not you go on to show symptoms or whether you never show symptoms. They seem to hedge their bets as if they knew what they had discovered was going to be unpopular. The authors even note that decision makers should consider the transmission intensity in the catchment area of the health facility and the feasibility of implementing a policy of continuous mask use for all healthcare workers compared to a policy based on assessed or presumed exposure risk. 
This is also the first article that I've seen that suggests that the catchment area and the local conditions should be the main view, even for healthcare workers and their personal protective equipment and the policies of those organizations. Now, I've argued this personally as long as a month ago to the director-elect of the Arkansas Department of Health, uh, Dr. Jose Romero. Now, listen carefully. The next quote is, the study suggests and recommends that, quote, staff who do not work in clinical areas do not need to use a medical mask during routine activities, e.g. administrative staff. This is yet another major departure based on evidence that even staff... In